Your body is nothing but a host to a massive collection of parasitic organisms ready to cause infection, ready to cause infection, ready to cause infection. You can feel them living and breeding and dying inside of you. Is it? Yeah. Yeah? Thought spiral? I love that description. Tell it to love stories. It's amazing. Uh, I think you can see a distinction between the way I carry myself when I'm with uh, Daisy versus Felix. Like there's a sort of comfortability that I have with Daisy and that's due to the longevity of our relationship. But also with Felix's character, Davis, you do sense the nervousness, the sort of like my voice gets a little bit higher. Um, and I think, you know, that is a platonic love versus a romantic love, I think. Very Great question. Yeah. I mean, it is true. There are two simultaneous love stories, um, which makes him my nemesis. Um, but I think, I think for Daisy and Aza, I think that um, she challenges her for, for most of the film and the book to be brave, to be bold, to um, take part in her life and not just observe it. Um, and I think she supports her through. I mean, yes, through like pep talks and through like loving words and things, but mostly through trying to keep the energy of her life as light as possible for as much of the day that they see each other as possible. Like it is just Daisy's way to be bold and, and you know, boisterous and, and whatnot. But I do, it always read to me as a real like labor of love and a real purposeful, conscious way of being to try and keep her as much as she can out of her head. So. I would say that's that's the two sides to that coin. That's, that's such an interesting like question in terms of like how do they challenge mm. Aza because it is it is not just one thing. I mean, Davis loves Aza so much, and he he sees her for who she is rather than just her anxiety or, or, or her compulsions. He really sees her um, and loves her to bits for her insight, for her for her knowledge, for you know how she loves for her empathy all of those things um and then i think in that same vein he challenges her to to um to be the person that she wants to be and i don't think she's been given that avenue before you know i, I certainly think he's kind of steps into her world with the understanding of like knowing you know knowing her from a very very small age um but also not really knowing her world and kind of inviting her to go well ask herself what does she want um, which is something that I think she needs at that time. She needs someone to go, well, you, you, are, you are not your thoughts. You are not uh, these things that are, you know, these aspersions that are cast on you. Um, and so I think that's really how he, he challenges her. And, and I think also in, in setting his own boundary and in kind of being, being quite, um, it's not selfish, but, but standing up for himself in the sense of like, this relationship is, is, is not balanced. Um, maybe, maybe, um, helps her along the path to 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 looking at her own um, dependencies. Well, that was really Hannah's job. Um, I, I, I felt like the book is so language based in the way that it approaches Aza's um, thought spirals and invasive thoughts. And I had no idea how you could ever find a visual language for that, how you could find a way to visualize that. Um, but Hannah did, thankfully. Thank you. Uh, I guess I just always saw it the way that you see it in the movie. Uh, that was really how I presented it from my first meeting with John. And that really uh, stayed true throughout the whole, whole process. And thankfully, John knew um, this incredible microscope photographer named James Weiss, who helped us a lot with the visuals for Aza's internal thoughts. I loved it. I think there was, in my opinion, no better way to end it. Um, it's such a John Green style ending where like, yeah, things are shit right now, but everything's gonna be okay because even though it's not okay, there's always hope. Um, and I love that about John Green's writing style and that Elizabeth and Isaac who wrote the script included. Um, and I think it's great, yeah. Honestly, I was an honor. I was so scared. I mean, I was peeing for weeks about that. Um, but I, it, it, it felt I'm really special to me and to have like this script and this book, which is so um, 
but it so exists in somebody's head and is just so is just sort of one big conversation about so many things to have Daisy sort of like be the closing remarks was was truly an honor and felt really special um especially since I, I just said this but um like specifically those words in that monologue, which are pretty tight to, to a lot of what's said in the book, um, feels the most out of anything I say in the book, like John, like what John wrote, it, it feels like being close to him. It feels like saying his words, especially because it's one of the more, um, you know, just like truly earnest and vulnerable moments of Daisy where there are no bits to be found. There are no jokes to be seen. Um, and it's pretty different tonally from like a decent amount of what I did in the film. So I was really nervous about it, but it felt like a really special night. Isabella is just such a dream to work with, so present and emotionally engaged and everything. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's an honor to have the like, w you know, YA montage be over, be under Daisy's words. That felt was a real honor. So that was a decision made by the screenwriters, Elizabeth and Isaac, and I really love it um, because ultimately it's a movie about friendship. And when I think about how this story connects with my own life, like I do think a lot about OCD, but I also think a lot about how I've had these friends in my life who have really, really lifted me up and really, and who believed me, you know, who believed that my pain is real and acknowledged that. And, and still and still work to meet me where I am and help me through. And that for me is what Cree is doing in that final scene in a way that's so beautiful and that reflects the best of my friendships, the best friendships that we can have. Um, and so I loved the decision. You know, in writing the book, I wanted to have this time jump for various reasons, some of them somewhat selfish, but um, I also wanted to, um, you know, give I wanted to give Aza a, a series of futures or a series of options for futures, um, but I love the idea of that being given to you by your best friend. I sure. love how much the book and the movie promote sharing with the people you trust. I think so many people can be afraid to open up about how they're feeling, and I personally would love to destigmatize that. I think it's so important to let people know what you're going through, and it's nice that Daisy is a character that provides that safe space while still being her own person.